Sanji is one of the Straw Hats' main fighters, but even as one of the crew's strongest, Sanji has quite a number of losses on his resume. But now, with a new and significant power-up, can current Sanji beat everyone he lost to in the past? How does his current abilities stack up against the Warlord or an Admiral? Stay tuned as we try to answer these questions. Let's first quickly highlight Sanji's new and improved abilities. Sanji already had superhuman strength, speed, endurance, and durability. But with the awakening of his latent genetic enhancements, all his attributes have significantly increased. Sanji is now nearly invulnerable, and with an accelerated healing rate, his body is now able to withstand hotter flames like Ifrit Jambe. All of these put together make Sanji a tough matchup for anyone. But what about against everyone he lost to in the past? What if current Sanji, with all his new powers, strength, and abilities, went head-to-head -head against each of the opponents he has faced and lost to before? And to set some parameters, we're exploring current Sanji versus his opponents as they were back then. So regardless of whether Anel returns from space with super high-tech power-ups, or if Kizaru has an awakened Devil Fruit ability we're yet to be aware of, none of this is relevant to today's discussion. Also, to get this out of the way early, Sanji is not beating Khalifa or Black Maria. It doesn't matter how strong he's gotten because it's got nothing to do with strength. Sanji doesn't fight women, full stop. So he will always lose to them regardless of any power-ups. Luckily for Sanji, the subscribe button is not a woman, so he can kick it as hard as he wants, and so can you. So why don't you give it a go and give the subscribe button the meanest click it's ever experienced. Jumping straight into the matchups, let's look at Anel. Make no mistake, no one was beating Anel back at Skypiea apart from Luffy. In fact, it would be difficult to beat any Logia user without Armament Haki. But seeing as pre-gear Luffy's rubbery attributes was Anel's biggest weakness, then it proves that anyone with Haki that can bypass Logi abilities would be enough to cause trouble for Anel. On top of that, Sanji's speed and attack power is way beyond what pre-gear Luffy had in his bag, so I think Sanji should have no problem doing more damage in both quality and quantity. Anel was destroying everyone at Skypiea with a single attack, but Sanji even back then was able to withstand the blow from Anel and even deliver a killer line after doing so. Now with Sanji's crazy newfound speed and his exoskeleton, making him one of the most durable characters in the series, even if Anel manages to hit him, and that's a big if, Sanji should have no problem tanking a number of hits before he finally wins. Next up is a former Admiral Kuzan, then known as Aokiji. Like Anel, Aokiji is a Logio user, so you would need at least Haki to even stand a chance against the former Admiral, which Sanji does now have. Sanji also has enough attack power to deal damage if he's able to successfully land a hit, but Aokiji also has an infinite range when it comes to his Devil Fruit ability, and since Sanji's attacks are mostly blunt physical blows, he would need to make the most of his increased speed to even get close enough to hit Aokiji. And if Sanji does manage to touch the former Admiral, Aokiji can freeze his opponents at the moment of impact, so Sanji could be in trouble if his kicks aren't fast enough to hit Aokiji before he uses his ability. Sanji would at the minimum need to kick in quick succession, similar to what he did versus Doflamingo, to minimize the risk of getting frozen. Sanji's speed should prove troublesome enough for Aokiji to deal with since he can most likely move around Aokiji to confuse him and try to bypass his Logi ability, similar to what Rock Lee did against Gara in Naruto. And as long as Sanji can keep his Ifrit Jambe activated, it should be enough to combat Aokiji's ice. But the question is, if it's fast enough to melt the ice that Aokiji produced, this should be a surprisingly challenging fight, but with his experience and by using more of the ability we saw him display back then, I think it's only a matter of time until Aokiji figures something out and ultimately takes the victory. Up next is another admiral that the Straw Hats fought and all lost to, Kizaru. Well, not really fought since Sanji was a victim of the one-sided beatdowns that Kizaru was handing out left, right, and center at Saobodi. Sanji now, though, would definitely put up a much better better fight. And this is probably the most exciting fight on paper on this list since both characters are super fast and Kizaru seems to favor kicking which is the base method of Sanji's combat style. And as we've established, with Sanji now having enough attack power to stand a chance against anyone, this matchup really comes down to a matter of speed. And although it's not completely unclear, Sanji's speed is difficult to scientifically quantify. Our biggest understanding for now is that he moves so fast that Queen thought he was turning invisible. But this is unlikely to be as fast as the speed of light, which is some 229.8 million meters per 
second. Also, it would take more for Sanji to maintain a speed that can match Kizaru's effortless use of his Pika Pika no Mi. And unlike Sanji, Kizaru follows no code of strictly using only his feet. While it may be his preference to do so, it may also just be that fights are too easy for Kizaru to use his hands. But he seems to have no problem using them, and he also fights with the laser sword, as we saw when he fought against Rayleigh, who was a considerable threat compared to everyone else at Saobori. And Kizaru can also casually shoot lasers from his fingers, which he could use to keep Sanji at a distance. So Sanji, as of now, will need to be at the very top of his game to stand a chance. But even then, I see Kizaru taking the win. But make no mistake, Sanji now, with his speed, durability, and increased attack output, is only an advanced observation haki away from being a legitimate threat to Kizaru. Not a guaranteed win, but a legitimate threat. But for now, the win goes to Kizaru in a mid-difficulty match. Similar to Kizaru and Aokiji before him, Kuma vs. the Straw Hats was a complete wipeout, and Kuma did this to the crew twice, the second time sending Sanji to the worst place he could possibly think of. Thanks to this, however, Sanji has gotten way stronger and would definitely be a huge challenge for Kuma if he was as strong then as he is now. Sanji now has enough power to deal damage and also more than enough durability to not hurt his legs kicking Kuma. Kuma has proven to be fast, claiming that his pad cannon can deflect air pressure at the speed of light. But although Kuma probably wasn't really trying back then, pre-time skip Zoro was able to dodge consecutive attacks from Kuma. So with Sanji's current speed, he should have no issue avoiding Kuma's pad cannon and laser beams to deal a blow himself. Zoro was also able to catch up to the warlord slash revolutionary by surprise with a quick attack, albeit it didn't do much, just enough to expose Kuma's wiring. So Sanji should be able to similarly catch Kuma by surprise by continuously vanishing and attacking out of nowhere. Zoro also noted that Kuma's body is harder than iron, but it's also stated that so is the Germa exoskeleton. Not to mention that Zoro and Sanji post time skip were able to defeat a PX7, which we know are prototype cyborg clones developed based on Kuma, and this was even before Sanji awakened his German modifications. But if those pacifistas were only the early base models that have since been upgraded, the best indicator to better gauge the outcome of this matchup against Kuma is Sanji's fight with S-Shark at Egghead Island. So far, we've seen Sanji able to withstand a punch from S-Shark completely unaffected. But similarly, Sanji's kick, which was strong enough to cause an explosion, left no damage on the Seraphim. So should the battle continue, seeing how Sanji would handle S-Shark's durability could tell us more about how Sanji would fare against Kuma. Now, I don't use this comparison to say that Kuma is as strong or only as strong as the Seraphim because we haven't really witnessed the full extent of Kuma's ability. For example, he didn't display any Haki back then. But then again, that was before Haki was formally introduced as a concrete ability. Whereas Kuma did have multiple uses of his Devil Fruit, which hasn't yet been fully explored with the Seraphim, but we do know the Seraphim are upgrades of the Pacifistas strong enough to even replace the Warlords. But in saying all of that, based on what we've seen with current Sanji and Kuma back then, I say Sanji wins this one. Also, as a side thought, current Sanji with his increased durability, exoskeleton, and regeneration would have probably received the least amount of damage from the Uso Shock and would have probably been the perfect person to take on Luffy's punishment at the time. Next up, Virgo. In terms of straight up combat ability, it was shown that Sanji and Virgo were about the same, with Sanji even shown to gain the upper hand during their clash. And although Virgo was able to shake off a Diable Jambe from Sanji, the attack was enough to make him spit blood. Virgo also wasn't able to land a hit on Sanji, although I don't doubt that if the fight was extended, he would have been able to do so. Also during the clash, Virgo was able to crack Sanji's leg, which was the only issue Sanji faced during the fight. But I think if Sanji then had his current exoskeleton, he would have had a great chance of beating Virgo, so add that to all the other extra power-ups he's gotten since then, and this should be an easy Sanji win. Next is Doflamingo, who even back then, during their short clash, noted Sanji's strength and was glad that finally someone strong had arrived when he fought Sanji. This, however, turned out to be pretty one-sided and left Sanji in big trouble, but that has a lot to do with the circumstances of the fight. Sanji was caught off guard mid-air, not knowing Doflamingo's Devil Fruit ability, although in saying that, 
had they fought on even ground. Even if Sanji somehow put up a better fight, Doflamingo probably would have still come out victorious. After all, it took a combined effort from Luffy, Law, and the country really to take the Warlord down. Although once Luffy turned on Gear 4, it was pretty much a one-sided fight. Doflamingo had no answer to Boundman Luffy, the same form that Luffy had trouble with against Cracker, who isn't even Big Mom's strongest commander. And I think Sanji now being able to defeat Queen, a Yonko commander and someone who is stronger than Jack, whom Kaido sent to rescue Doflamingo, we should be able to make the assumption that current Sanji is at least Gear 4 Luffy level and not sound too crazy. Although it's questionable whether Doflamingo's strings can even harm Sanji's exoskeleton, at the minimum, Sanji's increased durability should help him extend the fight long enough to figure out Doflamingo's ability and using his speed and Ifrit Jambe, I don't think Doflamingo could just block Sanji's attack as he did in their fight. I think it would still be a difficult match, but Sanji still wins in the end. This next fight is a family battle, and this one should be easy. Childhood trauma and dirty tactics were really the only reason Sanji even struggled and lost this fight in the first place. Sanji didn't even really lose the fight as much as he lost the emotional and psychological battle against Germa. But the difference between Sanji now and then isn't only that he's gotten physically stronger, because Sanji also now has a better grasp on who he is as a person. He is his own man. We've seen him embrace being the warrior of science that Judge created, but not to follow his father's orders, but instead to support his captain. Sanji's fight here is more of an emotional struggle and coming to terms that he can be a strong warrior for Luffy while keeping his humanity which his mother gave her life for. And this should allow the current Sanji to now stomp Judge with little to no difficulty. But what do you guys think? Do you agree with the outcome of these matchups? Do you think they would go differently? Or are there any other opponents you would like to discuss? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for listening to another one of my ramblings. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.